So Odyssey was a randomized trial in 18,924 patients with recent acute coronary syndrome who were already on maximally uh, tolerated statin therapy and were then randomized to alirocumab and placebo. And alirocumab is one of the PCSK9 inhibitors. And after a follow-up of 2.8 years, there was a 15% overall risk reduction in major adverse cardiovascular events, which translated to about a 1.6% absolute risk reduction. Okay, so the um, uh, kind of premise behind this is that we know that LP little a, which is an LDL cholesterol type you know, uh, a lipoprotein particle, but has an apo little a stuck on top of it. So we're now pretty convinced that it's a risk factor because there have been Mendelian randomization studies that, you know, suggest that if you have a gene that gives you high levels, then you have a higher risk of events. And so it is less clear whether that's true among people who already have coronary disease. So we wanted to find out, number one, whether LP little a was a risk factor in this population. Then we wanted to find out how much of an impact alirocumab has on LP little a, whether alirocumab treatment effect depended at all on what your baseline LP little a level was. And then the most important part was to try and sort out from a compound that lowers LDL cholesterol and lowers LP little a, you know, how much of the risk reduction is mediated by these two effects. So that basically summarizes the you know, rationale for you know, what we did. And so we found, number one, that LP little a is a strong risk factor for major adverse cardiovascular events, even in people that get standard of care um, you know, treatment for their coronary disease after they had an acute coronary syndrome. Uh, we you know, learned that if you have higher LP little a baseline levels, then you're at you know, higher risk. And so the risk reduction that you get with alirocumab is you know, higher. Um, we learned that alirocumab lowers LP little a, and that depends critically on at what level you start. So the higher your baseline LP little a is, the more lowering you, know, you get. And then, you know, again, the most important part of the analysis was to try and sort out whether it's LDL lowering or LP little a that drives the event reduction. And so regardless of LP little a level, LDL cholesterol lowering is kind of the dominant factor that drives event re reduction. But as you go from low LP little a to high LP little a, the proportion that's due to the LP little a reduction increases. And so when we just look at the upper quartile of LP little a, 27% of the overall reduction in you know, major adverse cardiovascular events is attributed to the LP a reduction 73% to the LDL reduction. And that suggests that in people with high LP little a, that that actually may be a meaningful clinical impact. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, since this is a sub-analysis of a randomized trial, I don't think it is something that will change practice, you know, tomorrow. But I think it should sensitize the clinician that there is still risk in people even that are optimally treated by the current guidelines, that they may be able to figure out what that risk is by measuring, you know, LP little a. And then I think it is an impetus for further research now that there are agents out there that selectively lower LP little a, you know, to do big randomized trials and really prove in the kind of, you know, standard way that we tend to prove these hypotheses whether the LP little a lowering actually matters. I think it's basically an impetus to do these randomized controlled trials. And there are some very exciting agents you know, out there right now. Uh, for example, there is an anti-sense you know, mRNA that really shuts down LP little a production. And so you get very large LP little a reductions and it's selective, you know, so you don't have to sort out, you know, how much is LDL and how much is LP little a. And so we're definitely looking forward to those large randomized trials.